everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a good start to your week. Uh, man, we're already three days deep. Time is definitely flying. Look, uh, I'm headed uh, to go meet with uh, someone at the shop. When I say shop, you guys pretty much know I'm talking about the cigar shop. Uh, but I want to talk with you. Um, we're going to do this as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, don't have a lot of time anyway. The shop isn't that far from where I'm at. But um, there's a price for ignorance. It's a steep price. And blacks pay it incessantly. Now, before I move forward, I want to clearly define and expound on the word ignorant because it carries a negative connotation uh, that I'm not applying here in the sense of something's wrong with ignorant people except for the fact they consistently remain ignorant. Um, ignorance is normally given a, uh, a negative connotation and often used as an insult. When I use it here, I'm not using it as an insult. I'm using it as a designation and a representation of a truth. And that truth is ignorance is the absence of knowledge. It's the lack of awareness and understanding about a particular situation, a particular subject. Now, there's nobody on this planet that is completely unignorant or no one that isn't ignorant of something. No one knows everything. So everybody is ignorant at some level. Here is the thing. Ignorance by its very definition isn't simply the absence of knowledge and understanding. It's the willful absence of knowledge. It is ignoring opportunities to learn, ignoring readily available information, ignoring obvious truths. For any number of reasons, we have mastered the game of ignoring our responsibility to know. We mastered the game of escapism, which is a way of getting away from what we need to know. And we've mastered the protocol, so to speak, of attacking the knowledgeable. It starts early in school. The smart kids always get picked on for being smart. It's amazing. Um, we malign people who know things. In fact, know it all is an insult. Here's the problem. For everything you don't know, everything you don't understand, everything you don't have an awareness of, you have a vulnerability. And so people who have an awareness, people who do understand, are in an, an advantageous position on being able to manipulate, control, mislead, misguide, mishandle, oppress, mistreat. Why? Because they know how the game is played. They know the machinations at play. They know how you're going to respond to it. They know what can be said and what will be said and what responses they're going to get because what? They've taken the time to develop a knowledge and an understanding of what's at play and how it works. We consistently ignore the power and the force of media to dictate how we think to dictate ideas, ideologies, philosophies. We constantly are triggered, triggered by the media. The media tells us what we're supposed to be angry at and when we're supposed to be angry by knowing what emotional triggers to pull. And this is consistently done. A lot of the times when we get triggered, it's because they don't want us to be in a calm, a calm state of clarity 
So they get us emotionally charged and focus on something of, of it, it, it may be something worthy, but it is a misdirection. And because we don't understand it, we get caught up in it. And because we don't have a sense of knowledge, we don't have protocols, we don't have strategies, we don't have plans, we react. And when you react, you're in this almost threat uh, response. The ability to use your frontal lobe or your frontal cortex to uh, be able to generate reasonable responses to things, strategic and calculated measurements of what's happening and observations and all of those things and then taking what, I, what knowledge and experience you have in that area to develop a solution. We are doing that. And this happens in, 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 in the state of trauma. When you're traumatized, you don't respond to stimuli well. You tend to react to it. Everything seems to be a threat. Everything seems to be something that you need to fight. And so you are constantly in this fight or flight state, but you can't resolve your issues in that state. Well, so what they do is they constantly show us things that's going to set us off. The killing of... Jordan Neely it's just the latest thing should we be upset absolutely but we shouldn't be waiting around until they kill us before we have a plan of what we're going to do if they kill us but because we consistently ignore that they are constantly showing us certain things there's there's a lot to learn out there then you got guys like me who's li literally spent 30 plus years researching and recording all of this stuff, everything from gentrification, mass incarceration, urban renewal, benign neglect, redlining, uh, mass incarceration, miseducation, on down the line, all the things that are literally set up in this white racial caste system to ensure that blacks never come to a point of unity and a point of purpose and a point of clear understanding of what needs to be done and start acting. Uh, Cointel Pro, the disrupt, used to disrupt the Black Nationalist Party and the Black Panther Party. The music industry usurping the, the power and the force and the reach of hip hop and turning it into a weapon against us. And we'll constantly go around and say, it's just entertainment, no such thing. We never look at the, 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 the depth of it, but they studied it enough to understand. People look at stuff and we joke about it on a superficial level, but we never ask the right questions. Nobody said, we talk about blacks and having, having rhythm, blacks being more naturally rhythmic than other races, especially Caucasians, and we don't and we don't realize that it's actually in our DNA, it's actually a part of our melanated existence, and there's a reason for that rhythmic uh, is how, rhythm is how life happens, rhythm is how we move, rhythm is our power, rhythm is our communication, rhythm is how you educate. If you wanna teach a baby something, teach it to them by singing it to them, singing it to them. You wanna teach a kid. Kids up until the age of 10 learn easier by listening, singing, dancing, playing, all these things. It's naturally how we learn. So then if that's how we learn, how do you think uh, the enemy would want to uh, inculcate negative ideas about ourselves and those within our community into our psyche? Music, maybe? Then entertainment, while it's not necessarily music, it's tend, it, it, it tends to be mostly charged, whether it's laughter and comedy, whether it's intense movies that get us excited, whether it's uh, news media that's sharing highly emotionally charged information. What happens? When you're emotionally charged, you retain. That's why when you get a good motivational event, that's going to be a lot of music, a lot of hype. Why? Because you retain more when you're emotionally charged. So then if I get you emotionally charged and then I, I, I superimpose a subliminal message of, of inferiority, a subli subliminal message that you are naturally criminally minded, uh, 
it settles. Not only does it settle in your mindset to where you now have to fight it off about yourself, you start to see your brothers and sisters in that light. You start to see black men in the light of being trifling, sorry, and unwilling to take care of their progeny when actually the scientific studies show that black men are actually more involved in the lives of their children, both financially and in presence than any other male group. That's scientific and it's been done more than once. But that's not the image that's being portrayed. And that's not the image that the average person believes. Why? Because the media says so. That's the power of it. So it's not just entertainment. It has you believe in far more lies than you could ever imagine. And those lies are dictating your behavior. So with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get off, um, get out of here and get into this meeting, but we've got to do a better job of learning and understanding. We've got to abandon this willful ignorance that we occupy and start searching for the answers, start reading books, start looking at research papers, start uh, paying attention to the people who invest their time, energy, and effort into teaching uh, these things. There are some great minds out there. There have been some great minds. There is a wealth of material that can open your mind and your eyes about what's going on in this world and how it impacts you and the things that you can do to put your children, yourself, your family, and the future of our race in a better uh, trajectory than we currently are. But we are going to have to be a keenly cognizant of the of the truth in the in, in the matter that ignorance comes at a hefty price and we've been paying that price for well over 150 years past our uh, enslavement and it's our responsibility to overcome that so on that note look I'm gonna get ready to get out of here you guys I thank you for giving me your time uh, have a great day and we'll talk soon. I'm out.